Conceptual questions related to electromagnetism. Question number one. What is the force that a conductor of length L carrying current I experiences when placed in a magnetic field B? What is the direction of this force? Answer. When a current carrying conductor is placed in magnetic force field, then it experiences the magnetic force. This force is the result of interaction of magnetic field due to current carrying conductor and the external magnetic field. Now we are placing a conductor having length L in a magnetic field. Because current is flowing through this conductor, so due to the flow of charges, magnetic field will be created around this conductor. So magnetic field of the conductor will interact with the magnetic field in which this conductor is placed. So both magnetic fields will interact with each other. Magnetic force will be applied on this current carrying conductor due to the interaction between two magnetic fields. This force is directly proportional to the current passing through the conductor I, magnetic flux density B, and the length of the conductor L. So we can write this magnetic force F is equals to I into L cross B. And we can write cross product of L and B as F is equals to B I L sine theta, where theta is the angle between the length of the conductor and the external magnetic field. The direction of the force can be found by the Fleming's left hand rule. The direction of the force is perpendicular to the plane of L and B. For more understanding of Fleming's left hand rule, you can go through the previous lectures uh, as I have already discussed the Fleming's left hand rule in detail in previous lecture. Question number two, what is the nature of force between two parallel current carrying wires in the same direction? Answer, the attractive force between the current carrying conductors is magnetic in nature. As each current carrying conductor produces its own magnetic field and also the each conductor experiences the magnetic force in the magnetic field of the other conductor. Actually, we have placed two current carrying conductors and we know that current carrying conductor produces its own magnetic field. So both current carrying, current carrying conductors are producing on magnetic fields. So the magnetic field of one current carrying conductor will apply force on another conductor. Consider two conductors carrying the current in the same direction. So net field between them decreases and the stronger field on their sides force them to come towards each other. The magnetic field between wires is of opposite polarity. So they cancel each other's effect. Net field is weaker between wires and at other sides of the wire magnetic field is stronger. Therefore, they are pulled towards each other, attractive force is applied. Due to the opposite polarity between the wires, they will attract each other. Question number three, what is the magnitude of force on a charge Q moving with a velocity V in a magnetic field B? Answer, when a charge is moving, it produces a magnetic field which interacts with the external magnetic field. As a result of both magnetic fields, the moving charge will experience a magnetic force on it. This force is directly proportional to the magnitude of charge, velocity of the charge V, magnetic flux density B, and it can be written as F is equals to Q into V cross V. And we get F is equals to Q V B sine theta, where theta is the angle between the velocity of the charge particle and the external magnetic field. If theta is equal to 0 or 180 degree, then force is equal to 0. So 
charged particle will move in a straight straight path if theta is equal to 90 degree then force will be maximum and charged particle will move in a circular path in magnetic field question number 4 in a uniform magnetic field b an electron beam enters with velocity v write the expression for the force experienced by the electrons for this question see the answer of question number 3 both the answers are related to the same topic with the same concept question number 5 what will be the path of a charged particle moving in a uniform magnetic field at any arbitrary angle with the magnetic field for this question you can see the answer of question number 3 Question number six: As an electron does not suffer any deflection while passing through a region, the question should be: Under what conditions the electron does not suffer any deflection while passing through a region? Answer: It may or may not be zero in this region. When a charged particle such as electron passes undeflected through some region of space, then it means that the electron experiences no net force. F is equals to Q into V cross B and F is equals to Q V B sine theta. Magnetic field in this region is zero. The electron is moving parallel or anti-parallel to the magnetic field when theta is equals to zero or 180 degree. The electron is moving perpendicularly into a region where electric and magnetic fields are also perpendicular. So we can write F electric is equals to F magnetic. Magnetic force is equals to electric force. So net force on electron is zero and it will pass undeflected. So when electric and magnetic force are perpendicular to each other, electron will pass undeflected, and net force will be zero on this electron. Question number seven: An electron beam passes through a region of crossed electric and magnetic fields. of intensity e and b respectively for what value of electron speed the beam will remain undeflected answer this method is called velocity selector method when an electron beam passes through a region of crossed electric and magnetic field then it may pass undeflected this may possible when speed of beam electrons is so adjusted that it will experience no net force when electrostatic force is equals to magnetic force then we can put f electrostatic as qe and magnetic force as qvb sin theta here theta is 90 degree and sin 90 is 1 and we get qe is equals to qvb and v is equals to e divided by b so the electron speed can be calculated from this formula v is equals to e divided by b and electron will pass undeflected question number 8 uniform electric and magnetic fields are produced pointing in the same direction an electron is projected in the direction of fields what will be the effect on the kinetic energy of the electron due to the two fields answer the electron will experience only electric force when electron moves along magnetic field then magnetic force experienced by it is zero because f magnetic is equal to q will be sin zero and sin zero gives zero and f magnetic magnetic force will be zero when electron moves along electric field then electric force experienced by it is f electric is equals to q into e here q is charge of electron that can be represented by e so the net force experienced by the electron is only the electric force because net force is equals to f electric plus f magnetic and f magnetic magnetic force is zero so we get f is equals to e into e so the particle will accelerate due to this net force and kinetic energy will continue to increase 
क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन वट इज द साइक्लोट्रॉन फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ अ चार्ज पार्टिकल ऑफ मैस एम चार्ज क्यू मूविंग इन अ मैग्नेटिक फील्ड बी आंसर वेन अ चार्ज पार्टिकल एंटर्स पर पेंडिकुलरली टू द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड सो इट विल स्टार्ट टू रिवॉल्व इन टू अ सर्कुलर पाथ एंड द फ्रीक्वेंसी एक्सिबिट्स बाय इट इज कॉल्ड साइक्लोट्रॉन फ्रीक्वेंसी एफ इज इक्वल टू क्यू बी डिवाइड बाई टू बाई एम explanation as the charged particle enters perpendicularly into a magnetic field the magnetic force exerted on it will be provide the necessary centripetal force as we know that when charged particle is moving perpendicularly to the magnetic field so magnetic field will apply a force on this charged particle and in result a centripetal force will be provided to the charged particle and that centripetal force is equals to magnetic force centripetal force is equals to mv square divided by r and magnetic force is equals to qvb sin 90 degree and by cancelling square with this v we get v is equals to qbr divided by m because sin 90 is equals to 1 and we know that v is equals to r omega putting v is equals to r omega we get r omega is equals to q b r divided by m and omega is equals to q b divided by m because r is cancelled with this r and omega is angular frequency that is equals to 2 pi f and finally we get frequency cyclotron frequency is equals to q b divided by 2 pi m so when a charged particle moves perpendicularly perpendicularly in a magnetic field then it will experience a force because moving charged particle has its own magnetic field and the magnetic field of moving charged particle will interact with the magnetic field in which that charged particle is moving perpendicularly so a force will be applied on this charged particle so charged particle will be provided with centripetal force and this moving charged particle will start revolving in a circular path and the frequency is given here that frequency is cyclotron frequency f is equals to qb divided by 2 pi m so frequency of that charged particle can be determined from this formula of cyclotron frequency question number 10 can neutron be accelerated in a cyclotron give reason answer neutrons cannot be accelerated by mean of cyclotron in cyclotron charged particles are accelerated using magnetic field of high frequency altering voltage in the device but neutron is neutral so no magnetic force acts on it so it cannot accelerate in cyclotron magnetic force is equals to qvb sin theta when charge is zero because neutron has zero charge so we get fb is equals to zero into vb sin theta and magnetic force is zero on the neutron so neutrons cannot be accelerated by means of cyclotron Question number 11 a current carrying loop free to turn is placed in a uniform magnetic field B what will be its orientation relative to B in the equilibrium state answer the plane of loop become perpendicular to the field to maintain the equilibrium and torque is equals to B I N A cos theta for n is equals to 1 when number of turns of coil is 1 then we put n is equals to 1 and we get tau is equals to bia cos theta for theta is equals to 90 degree because plane and magnetic field are at the angle of 90 degree perpendicular to each other put theta is equals to 90 degree and we get tau is equals to bia cos 90 degree cos 90 degree gives 0 and in return we get tau is equal to 0 zero, zero torque so equilibrium is achieved in this way question number 12 how does a current carrying coil behave like a bar magnet answer a current carrying loop behaves as a tiny bar magnet when current passes through current carrying coil 
for example in this current carrying coil current is flowing it produces magnetic field that resembles with the magnetic field of bar magnet as shown in figure so this current carrying loop has its own magnetic field around it and it resembles with the magnetic field of bar magnet so it also has poles north, north pole and south pole hold the coil in such a way that curling fingers show direction of current then thumb will be in the direction of north pole and this side of the coil is showing the north pole and this side is showing the south pole and this side is showing the north pole and this side is showing the south pole so this current carrying loop is behaving like a bar magnet having poles south pole and north pole and one side and north pole and south pole and on another side numerical problems question number 1 at what distance from a long straight wire carrying a current of 10 ampere is the magnetic field is equal to earth's magnetic field of 5 exponent minus 5 tesla given is current i is equal to 10 ampere magnetic field b is equal to 5 exponent minus 5 tesla and permeability of free space is mu not that is constant value equals to 4 pi exponent minus 7 webers per ampere per meter you should remember this value now we want to calculate the radius because the distance from a long straight wire carrying current to the point of magnetic field is radius r from ampere's law we know that b magnetic field is equals to mu not into i divided by 2 pi r we need to calculate r so we can shift it towards the left side of the equation and we get r is equals to mu not i divided by 2 pi b b is shifted in right side of the equation and we can put the values of mu not i pi and b and after calculation we get r radius is equals to 0.04 meter that is the distance from a long straight wire carrying current to the magnetic field question number 2 a long solenoid having 100 turns uniformly distributed over a length of 0.5 meter produces a magnetic field of 2.5 exponent minus 8 tesla at the center find the current in the solenoid given as number of turns n is equals to 1000 length is equals to 0.5 meters magnetic field is equals to 2.5 exponent minus 3 tesla permeability of free space is constant value that is mu not is equals to 0 mu not is equals to 4 pi exponent minus 7 webers per ampere per meter we need to calculate current i we can use the relation b is equals to n mu not i divided by l we need to calculate i so we can shift other terms on second side of the equation and we get i is equals to b l divided by n into mu not putting all the values and after solving we get current i is equals to 0.99 ampere or 1 ampere so this is the current in the solenoid question number 3 a proton moving at right angle to a magnetic field of 0.1 tesla experiences a force of 2 exponent minus 12 newton what is the speed of proton given as magnetic field that is equal to 0.1 tesla and magnetic force f is equal to 2.0 exponent minus 12 newton proton charge is 1.6 exponent minus 19 coulombs we need to calculate the speed of proton v magnetic force on a moving charge particle is given by the formula fp magnetic force is equals to qvb sin theta by putting all the values and first of all we can shift all the terms on second side of the equation to get the value of v 
and v is equal to f b divided by q b sin theta by putting all the values and solving we get v speed of moving proton is equals to 1.3 exponent 8 meter per second Question number 7. A 0.2 meter wire is bent into a circular shape and is placed in a uniform magnetic field of 2 Tesla. If the current in the wire is 20 milliampere, then find the maximum torque acting on the loop. We know that when a current carrying loop is placed in a magnetic field, so the current carrying loop has its own magnetic field and it is placed in another magnetic field, so there must be a torque acting on the loop. Given as length is equal to 0.2 meter and magnetic field B is equal to 2 Tesla. Current I is equal to 20 milliampere. Maximum torque we need to calculate and we know that as wire is bent into a circular shape. So length of the wire is equal to circumference of the circle. That is equal to L is equal to 2 pi R. We need to calculate R. We can shift 2 pi on left side of the equation. So R is equal to L divided by 2 pi putting value of L pi and after solving we get R is equal to 0.318 meter. We need to calculate area and area is equal to pi R square putting the value of pi and R and after solving we get A is equal to 3.18 exponent minus 3 meters square. Now we can calculate maximum torque. Maximum torque is equal to B I A because N is equal to 1. There is only one number of loop. So one turn we can write n is equal to 1 and we get tau is equal to b i a. Putting the values of b i and a and after solving we get maximum torque is equal to 1.272 exponent minus 4 newton meter. Question number 8. The full scale deflection for a galvanometer is 10 milliampere. Its resistance is 100 ohms. How can it be converted into an ammeter of range 100 ampere? Given as current through galvanometer IG is equal to 10 milliampere. Resistance of galvanometer RG is equal to 100 ohms. Total current I is equal to 100 ampere. We need to calculate shunt resistance. To find the Shunt resistance, we can calculate it from the formula RS is equal to IG, RG divided by I minus IG. Putting the values of IG, RG, I and IG and after solving we get RS is equal to 0.01 ohms. So in this way when we get the value of RS and shunt RS is equal to 0.01 ohm that is shunt resistance, we can convert the galvanometer into ammeter of range 100 ohms. Question number 9. How a 5 milliampere 100 ohms galvanometer is converted into 20 volt voltmeter given as current through galvanometer IG is equal to 5 milliampere. Resistance of galvanometer IG is equal to 100 ohms. Total voltage V is equal to 20 volts. High resistance RH is required. Because by connecting high resistance in series with galvanometer, we can convert galvanometer into voltmeter. And the formula of high resistance is equal to Rh is equal to V divided by Ig minus Rg. Putting the values of V, Rg and Ig and after solving we get Rh is equal to 3900 ohms. So when we use this formula, and use this formula and find this value that is value of high resistance so we can convert galvanometer into 20 volt voltmeter by connecting this high resistance in series with galvanometer numerical number 10 two parallel wires 10 centimeter apart carrying current in opposite directions of 8 ampere what is the magnetic field halfway between them Given as current in wire I1 is equal to 8 ampere and current in wire 2 is equal to I2 is equal to 8 ampere. Radius midway R is equal to 5 centimeters. Permeability of free space is constant value. Mu naught is equal to 4 pi x minus 7 Weber's per ampere per meter. 
we need to calculate the net magnetic field by using formula B is equals to mu naught I1 divided by 2 pi R plus mu naught I2 divided by 2 pi R. We can add the magnetic field of first wire, wire 1 and magnetic field of wire 2 to get the net magnetic field. And here mu naught divided by 2 pi r is common in both the terms. So we can take it as common. Mu naught divided by 2 pi r into I1 plus I2. Putting the values and after solving, we get magnetic field, net magnetic field B is equal to 6.4 exponent minus 5 Tesla. So this is the magnetic field halfway between two wires, parallel wires.